told me that he plans on hiring all of Rodney Alexander's staff that remain neutral during the election. As you can see, this is about a 12 year old car that they use and the paint chip, the bumpers broken. A two car collision led to the car right behind me bursting into flames. Congratulations, Vance. I don't know if you know this yet, but you are the newest fifth congressional district rep. Vance, how does it feel? Bambi to bad guys. According to Monroe police, locals have been using game cameras to catch home burglaries in progress. About 840 adjudicated properties that the police juries held, some of them for over 20 years, and now they've made it a little bit easier to acquire these properties. A colorful and creative display lined the old Mississippi Bridge in Vicksburg today, and it's all for a good cause. The school also says the situation is still under investigation and that that five day suspension could be reduced. Well, Jenna, it was a terrible scene here as a two car collision led to the car right behind me bursting into flames. According to witnesses, it all happened around 530 this evening on Richwood Road number two in Richwood. Police investigators say both cars were driving at a high rate of speed when one car hit the other from behind. Right now, deputies believe each vehicle had one person in it. One driver is being treated at Glenwood Regional Medical Center with moderate injuries, and the second driver died on scene. Investigators haven't released the names or ages of the two involved, and at this point, they don't know how the crash happened, and alcohol does seem to be a factor. Live in Richwood, Hillary Hunt, KNOE 8 News. Now, Hillary, you say alcohol suspected. Are there any charges yet filed? Well, I just spoke to one of the sheriff's deputies and they said as of right now, the surviving driver will be charged with vehicular manslaughter. OK, thanks. A 22 year old inmate being housed at the Union Paris Detention Center is now in solitary confinement after it was discovered that he had a Facebook account and was actively using it while in prison. Today, I got a chance to speak with Sheriff Dusty Gates, who says this is an ongoing investigation that is sure to turn up more prisoners using social media while they're serving their time. Cody Fontenot, like any other 22 year old, has a Facebook account. But unlike most 22 year olds, Fontenot is behind bars, serving time on a burglary conviction, and isn't allowed to actively be on social media. The legislature in 2011 and, uh, created a law which made it illegal for inmates uh, under DOC regulations to uh, be able to have access to social media. Union Parish Sheriff Dusty Gates tells us they received a tip from a woman just last month, telling them that there was a Facebook page that was created and being used by an inmate in the prison. After investigation, they found the tip to be true. Uh, during that investigation, we were able to do a search of the jail, the cell in which he was uh, housed in, and we were able to determine and found that phone and also two additional phones which had been uh, smuggled into the jail by unknown individuals. Fontenot is using these phones to access a social media site, posting statuses and even posting pictures from inside of his cell. But Gates says this is one discovery that has led to many others. We were able to determine that there are other individuals in the detention center here that have also created pages and this investigation is continuing and we do expect additional charges and additional arrest. So instead of posting how many days until he'll be out of jail and back on the social scene, Fontenot not only cannot update his status, but that highly anticipated release date may be pushed back too. Now Fontenot has been booked on the misdemeanor charge that carries a penalty of 30 days in jail and up to a $500 fine. Now we've been looking at the Facebook page all day in the newsroom. I guess the question is, has it been taken down and what happens to the page now? Well, I asked Dusty Gates, are you guys going to take it down? And he said he's going to keep it up during the investigation and hopes that it helps them find the other inmates via the cell phone that they use. And witnessing the family's first trip to Capitol Hill, Hillary. Vance McAllister is officially Congressman McAllister after making his first trip ever to our nation's capital. He's been sworn in, voted, and begun to decorate his office. I was there every step of the way, and in the first of three series, we will look at McAllister's new office on the road to Washington. This is a sound Congressman Vance McAllister is still getting used to, walking to his office in the House of Representatives, formerly occupied by Rodney Alexander. Rodney's uh, 
football helmets and all that stuff were gone. But uh, it was, uh, you know, it didn't take long for my family to rearrange all my furniture whenever they came in. Thursday morning before being sworn in, McAllister was presented with his name plaque, making reality set in. There we go, man. But for Congressman McAllister, this was his first time to Washington and his first time in his new office. But luckily it wasn't the first time for his chief of staff, Adam Terry. We showed him where the light switch was, literally. Now for Congressman McAllister, this isn't just an office or just a desk. It's a piece of history. There's a picture taken in this office that I put up in the window with uh, President Gerald Ford when he was in the House of Representatives. And this office, Canon 316, was his office. So I thought that was, uh, obviously the plant's not still alive in here, but the walls are still there. And uh, I think it's pretty doggone cool that mm -hmm. I'm sitting in the same office at one of the presidents that you found the statue downstairs of had at the same time. But for now, McAllister is still the new kid on the block. And he says that doesn't intimidate him. But one thing about old Lance McCoskey, I'll find out there's, uh, there's nothing I'm scared of. So whatever I can do to help and whatever way I can help, I, I'm, I'm here for the people. McAllister says he's already begun work for his people the people of the 5th District. In Washington, D.C., Hillary Hunt, KNOE 8 News. Now McAllister has a little time to get acclimated because Congress will not resume session until after the holiday. On Monday, we'll take a look at his family's reactions to the new position and their first time in the capital city. Hillary, talk to us a little bit about the trip. What was it like getting to be there with his family and, and there on their first trip? Well, I mean, it was a once in a lifetime experience because when you go with people who have never been, and especially on circumstances like this, everything is heightened. The energy is and just all the reactions to the monuments, and being able to actually see a congressman sworn in is honestly a once in a lifetime thing. And when you're in the House and everyone was congratulating him, it was just so awesome to kind of see the start of the campaign to the finish. Absolutely. All, All right. right. Thank, thank you, you Hillary. So much.